Hey there, this is Sally for Soul Purpose Conversations. I'm bringing you series two of these podcasts and the second set is about changing lanes, owning a different part of myself, or maybe more a sense of arriving, arriving in myself and being more knowing of who I am. So today I'm going to share something with you that feels difficult. There's a sort of vulnerability in me for sharing this way. And even though I talked about a lot of stuff which has been quite difficult, you know, running out of money, not having anywhere to live, stuff with my mother, this feels even more as if I'm stripping myself naked. And I suppose that's probably appropriate when I'm talking about sex. I'm going to call this one showing up in fierce authenticity because I do believe there's something really powerful about owning my own desire and knowing what it is, knowing what makes me tick. And I think there's something really attractive about a woman who knows what she wants and knows how to say it and direct a conversation and a situation to uh, meet her needs. (laughs) So um, today, yeah, showing up in fierce authenticity. I'm going to be talking about writing from a place of sexual energy. But of course, we don't have to be writing. It could be doing anything. Going shopping. Playing football. That that sexual pulse lives in us and can be an enormously creative force. I'm going to start with a short story, different than usual, but it's a different topic. So why not change things up a bit and do things different to before? The story is called Alchemy Between the Sheets. Prowling around the edge of the paper like a caged lioness, waiting for her mate. I wait for the moment to ripen, like pendulous peaches heavy with sweetness. My inspiration is waiting to be plucked, just like me. On fire, skin burning, as my thighs touch the cornice of the chair beneath me, I write, chased by the demon of desire. My pen drips its purple juices onto the virgin white paper beneath the oblique nib of my pen. As it races across lines, caressing, screaming, nudging, nipping, and gliding words onto the page. Seamlessly working in unison to create, not knowing where it'll go, where it'll end, or how long it'll last. With every breath, a new idea arises and is pushed into the mix. A caress here, a nibble there, a tightening of this and loosening of that to create new words that lead to the climax. Some worth celebrating, others fake and not worth the effort to get there. Dripping in inspiration, everything becomes a creative orgasmic pulse. Ideas aligned with breath, united with pen, working together in harmony, in and out, on and off and up and down, with the syntax of words and the rhythm of poetry. Expression, dashing across the page, whispering, don't finish before me. 
Desire fuels the process. Words scorch across the page, burning space in calories. It all becomes a melting pot. Me, the creation, intuition, and the big idea crashing and thrashing and melting and merging under the duvet of inspiration. Until I'm spent in perspiration and finally surrender to the knowing that's in me to the words that need to be written, and let them out in a sigh or a scream. Yielding to the abyss of past words, future words, and words not yet thought of, I fall and fall into creation and surrender, endlessly full of unborn verses and ideas, always potentially pregnant with words able to give birth to more and more, endlessly fertile, endlessly creating and pulsing with energy, just waiting to start again and again and again. So for those of you who've listened to more of my podcasts or read more of my other blogs, you know that a whole point of the process has been to show me in a more authentic way and for me to connect with myself in more realness and self-awareness yeah and it has been quite challenging for me to include this podcast in the set it would be crazy not to because The energy of creation beats loud in my heart. I have a fecundity and abundance about me that I can find overwhelming when there isn't an outlet for it. Sometimes I can just have ideas walking downstairs (laughs) or driving the car or hoovering the floor. I think there's something in Alice in Wonderland where she says something about having three good ideas before breakfast. And that's very often what I feel like, (laughs) that ideas just pour out of me. And for a long time, I had trouble focusing and knowing what to act on and what to ignore. Nowadays, I'm actually much better at that. I've become, I think, more generous with passing on ideas. I think that's part of my role as well, that the ideas visit me and that I shouldn't necessarily be the one to bring them to life, but I can be the one to pass them on so others can do that. But with all of this in my head and all of the ideas, one of the things that has helped me enormously is writing. And it has enabled me to have an outlet for the ideas, even if I never do anything with them, (laughs) just writing them down has got them out of my body and out of my head. Yep, there's another part to that process, which is also really magical. When I sit at my desk and write, it's like moments of wordsmith magic. There is a sort of alchemy that occurs between me, the pen, and the environment. And it gets to be about something bigger than me, where all I am is the channel for the thing to come through. And I experience a kind of tipping point when... There's a before and after. So the before is when I know that I'm sitting there at my desk and I know that I'm writing. And there's a tip, 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 tip. And then suddenly, whoosh, I'm in another world almost. And my hand writes things that I had no idea my head could possibly know. And that's the the magic of the wordsmith moments. And maybe that's when 
the fierce authenticity shows up in that balance and harmony between being and doing inside and outside, where I can balance on an almost invisible point and allow the wisdom of the world to flow through me. It feels fierce to be like this, but it also feels vulnerable. I feel like I'm exposing a wild, uncensored, fertile part of me. I feel as if I'm standing naked on a cliff, singing into the wind with my grey hair, blowing out behind me in my bum, cold in the breeze. <laughs> Yet, I suspect this is the very nature of authenticity and vulnerability. How can we express the essence of ourselves? How can this show up in life? And how can we be free and dare and to express? And what does that look like for each of us? This seems to be the essential existential question. Who am I? What do I value? How can I show up in the world? How do I bring my dreams to life? What sort of person am I? And what does it mean? So I hope you can find your way of finding your fierceness and showing it and sharing it. I wonder what that looks like for you and how it feels. Thanks for listening today. It was great to have you here. If you enjoyed this podcast, there are more of them. You can find them on my website at soulpurposecommunications.com. You can find them at pretty well most places where you like to download your music. You can just search for the name of my website, soulpurposecommunications.com. If you'd like to read more, then my website also has other things that I've written alongside my book, which has become a collection of conversations that I've had showing a path from kind of chaos, I suppose, chaos and mess, and how I sorted that out and how I lived through it and thrived to get to the point where I am now. So more information about the book, Conversations with Myself, A Story of Rebuilding, that's available on my website. Otherwise, you can go straight to Amazon and Google it. Luckily, it'll come up just under Nelson Mandela's book of the same name. <laughs> so that's all I have to say. Thanks for listening. and. Maybe come back another time. Mm -hmm.